my keys. Oh, are we doing anything tonight? No, I gotta go pick up my mom and do the groceries. Alan's going back overseas tomorrow. You should have told me. My freezer's full. I could have brought you a roast or something. Okay. Next time. <laughs> what you doing out here? It's freezing. Hey. You okay? Yeah, fine. Why? Party's for you. Just getting some air. Your grandma baked a bon voyage cake. She wrote sayonara on it. I don't think she spelled it right, neither. You tell me if something's bothering you, right? Everything's fine. Really, I'm just, uh... Thinking about going back to Japan. You know, I always wanted one of those silk bath robes, you know, the ones with the, the big sleeves on them. You know that big thing that's around the middle here? Oh, yeah? Mm hmm. Nah, I'll add that to my list. What list? Well, Billy gave me this uh, list of electronic equipment about as long as my arm. He misses you so much when you go, you know. He pretends he doesn't. Of course, I pretend not to notice. Dessert's ready. Yes, I are. I had more postage, I like them fresh. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> Take care of yourself. I, I gotta go. Hey, what are you doing, Annie? 
Bulletin from the Bella Woods, sir. We got a problem. Lieutenant Doug Stein. Dennis Bain, Public Affairs. You here to quiet the rumor mill? I'm sure as hell gonna try. Okay, let's go. That'll be all, Mr. Eastman. Thank you. Kinder looks like a boy scout. My God. That's Vince. Helvey. Vince has taken the fifth. Helvey's confessed, and he's implicated Vince as a possible conspirator or an accessory. What else do you have besides the confession? Some eyewitnesses at the scene, some footprints, some blood soaked shoes. What's the press know? They know what happened. They don't know who or why. Any other assaults on board? Allegedly, yes. Reported? Supposedly. What did the command do to protect them? <laughs> That's a good question. They don't get Eastman off the ship now. He's dead.
This is Hages? Dorothy Hages? Mrs. Hages, I'm Steve Billings. This is Chief Petty Officer Anderson. He accompanied your son's body here. I'm here to be of whatever assistance I can, ma'am. I'm his Uncle Ben, and this is Kathy, Alan's sister. Is Alan? He's here. I want to see him. Mrs. Hages, your son's injuries were quite extensive. I want to see him. Ma'am, the Navy has suggested that the casket be kept closed. I don't think you want to remember your son this way. I want to see him. I just want to see him. say anything. Yeah. Except where was he when his son was growing up? Dorothy, this isn't the place at the time. I'm so sorry, Dorothy. I know you are. He wanted to come. That's fine. I'm not very good at this. 
not a public speaker or anything. But I wanted to say something. Alan loved the Navy. And I know the Navy loved him. We come from a three-generation Navy family. You don't get much better than that. At least that I know. I just want to say, Alan, if you can hear me, you made us all proud of you. I hope when I enlist, you'll be with me wherever I go. I hope it's a lot of places. Places you never got to see. Places we'll see together. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. We'll see you back at the car. I'm heading back to Japan. This is the number of Captain John Curtis. He's the naval legal officer in Yakuska that's handling your case. Now, if you have any questions, you should call him. Thank you. I appreciate everything the Navy's done. Mrs. Hages, I'm authorized to inform you that the two men the Navy have in custody have been charged with murder. They're both from the USS Bella Wood. That's Alan's ship. Yes, ma'am, they were shipmates of his. How do you mean? You, you United States sailors killed my son. Yes, ma'am. purse? Yeah, I think I saw it here. Oh, I thought it was there. Did you look in the car? Hello? Mrs. Hages. Hi, I'm Rick Rogers with Pacific Stars and Stripes, the service newspaper in Japan. I'm doing a story on the death of your son. I'd like to ask you a few questions if you have a minute. Uh, yeah, sure. Before your son's death, what did Alan tell you about the Bellawood? conditions on that ship? Uh, nothing. Who are you dealing with in Japan? Captain Curtis. Well, what has he or the Navy told you about why Alan was killed? Nothing. They haven't to told me nothing. Nothing about the, um, you know, even the names of the sailors or why, or, or when they're going to be court-martialed. Nothing. A possible reason that they haven't told you anything, Mrs. Hages, is that if officers aboard the Bellawood knew that your son's life was in danger and they did nothing to protect him, well, that involves serious command failure. It also raises the question of the existence of a homophobic culture in the service that they don't want to closely examine. What culture? Your son's death may have been the result of a gay bashing. Was your son a homosexual to your knowledge? No. Of course not. Um, I'm sorry, I gotta go. No, sure. Who's that? It's a reporter. He wants to do a story on Alan. He was killed because he was a queer. Who said this? Man on the phone. 
And, and who was he? A reporter, I told you. <laughs> I didn't say that about Alan, okay? So don't snap at me. Kathy. Exactly what did he say? He said it was a gay bashing. And he was part of a culture. Or, or it was part of a culture. I don't know. Something was bothering Alan before he left. He wouldn't say what exactly, just that the Navy wasn't for him anymore. Yeah, well, whatever he said, it got nothing to do with this. Do you remember that talk Alan had with you a couple years ago? That conversation that upset you so much? It was Alan being irritating. That was Alan trying to figure out who he was. He tried to tell you about it. He said he thought he liked men. He said that to provoke me. And he said that when he was stationed in San Diego. Everybody tries everything in California and is weird. You know that. He said that because he was trying to tell you something. Alan was not a queer. Klinger was a queer. Did you ever watch MASH? Brother didn't walk around in a skirt with his little pinky in the air. It's in the Navy, for God's sake. He had girlfriends. They're not all like that. Well, I never met one. I hope I never do. Besides, he went to church. He knew right from wrong. So do the people I know. Why are you insisting on this? Look, Mom, I'm not saying anything except that if Alan was gay, maybe he was born that way. Oh, he was not born that way. You weren't even there when he was born. I was, and everything was just fine when he was born. Besides, when God took Adam's rib, he didn't make another man. He made something men are attracted to, women. So, to be attracted to men, you got to go against what's natural. And for that, you got to use your head and choose it. Don't tell me Alan chose to be a queer. Hello? Mrs. Hages? Yes. Captain Curtis, ma'am. Thank you, Captain, for calling me back. Um, just a minute, please. I'm sorry to disturb you. I know you must be real busy. Well, I thought we brought you up to date last week, ma'am. Well, um, yeah, but a reporter called me. Can you speak up, please? A reporter called me about Alan. He said that he was killed because he was a queer. Did you get this reporter's name, ma'am? I think he said Rick Rogers. He writes for the Pacific Stars and Stripes. You got a confession. You know, I was thinking, if you let that out now, what really happened, then there wouldn't be a story. I can't release that information, I'm afraid. How come? Well, because due process, fair process, Mrs. Hages, isn't a game to be played out in the press. But this was a smear, what he said about Alan. And the, the, the Navy, too. And the way the Navy best protects its interests, as well as yours, Mrs. Hages, is to ensure that the legal proceedings taking place against your son's alleged killers are absolutely above reproach. And when are those going to be? Soon. They'll be coming up soon, ma'am. So I hope that helped. Or at least gave you a clear view on how we intend to proceed. Oh, it, uh, it does. Thank you. Well, that's fine. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Thanks, Frank. Can I get you anything else, Dorothy? No, I'm good. Hey, Dorothy. I'm looking for you. Thanks, Dave. What's the hurry? Gotta get to work. Look, we both got in a hit on this one. We need to talk. I told you, I got to get to work. You're not the only one who lost a son. Yeah, when he wanted to come live with you, you slammed the door in his face. Yeah, you got a memory that just don't quit. Just tell me what you want. He gets death benefits. Don't think you're entitled to them all. What? You fight me on this, you lose, Dorothy, I promise. You go up against anyone and anything, and you lose. Because you're a loser, Dorothy. You always have been, you always will be. Go ahead.
Miss Reporter. Rogers. What branch? Army. <sighs> Naturally. When is the mainstream press going to pick this up? This is an advanced copy. What, a few hours? That's why the press conference. To go preemptive. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself. I'm Commander Brian Deaver, Public Affairs. Now, I know there's been a lot of interest regarding the alleged murder at Sasebo of Petty Officer Schindler. And I want you to know that I'll be as helpful to you as I can. Okay. Yes. Uh, is the Navy denying the reports in Stars and Stripes that Schindler's killing was a gay bashing? I want to emphasize that we're in the pre-adjudication mode here. That's why the Navy has chosen to limit its comments to date. Yes. Yes. Do the contents of the confession the Navy has taken from one of the sailors confirm in any way the Stars and Stripes story? The homosexual issue is certainly a motive being investigated, but there are a lot of other motives being looked at at this time. Right here, yeah. What is the first uh, legal proceeding in this case, and when is it? Each of the accused is entitled to an Article 32 hearing in which the evidence is presented and the charges are set. Now, depending on the outcome of the hearings, we go to court-martial if... Sir, sir. What are the issues, Have dates been set for these hearings? You'll be kept informed. Thank you very much. Do you know Alan? Yeah, we served in the Navy together. On the Bella Wood. I'm his mother, Dorothy. Oh, how do you do, ma'am? I'm Richie Smith. It's his birthday, you know. Yeah, I know. I thought I'd be celebrating it here. Can you tell me something about him? I don't know how much Alan told you about himself, but his life the last couple of years. Well, he wrote to me every week. I know he was happy. I know he loved the Navy. He loved the Navy. He even sent me a picture of his ship once in a heart frame. Like a man in love bragging. I have to get going, ma'am. Sure. I'm sorry. two jobs when you were little. You'd always stand behind me and press as hard as you could. Make it all better. I always tried to give you a nickel, but you never did. It's making any sense to me, sweetie. I, I want to protect you, but I don't know how. I 
don't know what to do anymore. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me, honey. Talk to me. Is that why Ellen was killed? Because he was a queer? I can't answer that. Well, everybody but the Navy's been saying it. Is that what that sailor said in his confession, that he killed Ellen because he was a queer? Ma'am, the Navy is not going to comment on the motive behind your son's homicide until the appropriate time and in the appropriate forum. Well, that's what you've been saying for weeks, Captain. Is there going to be a trial? Mrs. Hages, the Navy has assured you that at the appropriate time, all of these matters will be revealed in public proceedings against the individuals involved. When is that going to be? Soon. An A32 hearing is coming up for one of the accused shortly. When? Next week? Next month? When? You'll be the first to know, ma'am. You're related to the victim. Mrs. Hages, you're going to have to trust that when the Navy loses one of its own, our family is as concerned as yours in seeing that justice is done. I'll call you just as soon as I have more definite news. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. What's going on? On what? They're saying stuff about your brother. Who? The newspapers. The people from the papers are at the house. Mom, what are they saying? What are they saying? They're saying your brother was a queer. Is it true? I don't know. There are Jacqueline and Hydes in this world, and some people are split that way, but Alan wasn't. And I think it's a shame for all of us if a name like Schindler is going to be remembered as something dirty and foul. Alan wasn't dirty, Doris. Or foul. Well, let's just say that being painted queer doesn't do anyone's name any good. The Navy never said he was that way. Well, can't you get them to say that then? That he wasn't? Do you want their number, Doris? It affects me, us, directly, what people say he did behind our backs. Why? Because what they choose to do is disgusting. And what if they don't choose to be that way? Oh, for crying out loud. Seriously, do you know anyone who would actually choose to be hated? Anyone who would choose to have their lives made miserable by people like us who don't understand them? You sound like an ignorant person. Homosexuality is a sin. God said so. You just listen to yourself. I do. I do, and guess what? I listen to God, too. And he's not the God who people believe said a long time ago that all Jews automatically go to hell because they're not Christian. And then later said, whoops, sorry, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, but that's ignorant people making up God, Doris, not God. We're just getting off track here. It's unnatural, Ben. <laughs> so is abandoning your children. So is leaving their mother after they're born. Look, this is not about your father. Why my cousin decided to leave your mother... Well, look, look. 
Are we not going to get anywhere going down that road? The absence of love seems to me a bigger wrong than loving someone Sarah, differently. Just simmer down the both of you. Our name has been stained, Dorothy. And if you have any sense, you'll do something about that. <laughs> How? Reject Alan? Oh, please. I've had it up to here with your morals. How can you stand there and say that your brother was queer? In front of your grandmother and your mother and your brother. It's the living that need watching out for now. Ben, would you drive me home? Oh, Mom, stay, please. What for? To listen to more of this? I'll be in the car, Ben. Billy, where are you going now? I'm going out, okay? <laughs> What's the big deal? Mrs. Hayden, please, a statement. Mrs. Hayden, was your son a homosexual? Was homosexuality involved in the murder? Was your son gay, Mrs. Hayden? Yeah, what has the Navy told you? What do you believe? I believe the Navy. How do you know that Alan was gay, Mrs. Hayden? They honored my son with a full military funeral. I have the flag for Miss Kaufman to prove it. Oh, please leave me alone. Is it true the two suspects were from the Bella Wood? What other story in Stars and Stripes, Mrs. Hayden? Please. Hayes, yes. See? Um, I'm sorry about the newspapers. It, um, it does matter to me what Alan was. I mean, it doesn't matter to any of us. Um, I didn't bring anything for lunch. Do you want to go out? I can't. I gotta go to the post office and, uh, pick up Alan's things. You know, his personal effects. You want company? Okay, yeah. Well, if you change your mind, you let me know. I'll see you on the floor. I had this idea the other night that everyone in life is really in a lifeboat that at some point sinks. And no one can help you and no one can help each other. And then God drops you a life preserver, someone to love. And you grab it and you hold on to it and your life is safe. More people are finding out about me. It uh, scares me a little. You never know who would want to injure me or cease my existence. Oh, miracle, miracle, I'm in love with a dancer from New York. Small town boy goes big time. We met on shore leave last week. Eric is everything anyone could want.
This is your pole. You get off early? No, I took the afternoon off. They let you? No, I just took it off. I don't care what they think. <laughs> Haven't got all day. I called you last night. I left a message. Yeah, I know. And I called you this morning. I got that one, too. Are you mad at me? Dorothy, you're a 42-year-old woman. If your mother's mad at you at 42, get over it. I wanted to talk to you about Alan. I think maybe, uh... I think maybe he was, uh... A homosexual. Alan was a homosexual, Mom. And I think it's my fault. I mean, if I hadn't gotten divorced, if he'd had a father, his father would have made a difference? A good man could have. He had been, and your father. Not the same. I don't know what flips a child that way, sweetheart. Maybe it's just in him. And that's the material you were given to work with. Yeah, but I don't know that for sure. You know anything else for sure? Did you blame me? Oh, Dorothy. I don't know a lot about certain things. I don't know a lot about anything. But I remember holding Alan when he was a day old. What a strong, perfect baby. I remember how proud I was of him the day he went in the Navy. And then to say goodbye to him at the airport, never dreaming I wouldn't be able to talk to him again except over his coffin. One thing I do know, our lovely Alan shouldn't be dead. And we ought to know why he is. Come on. What's the matter? Nothing. Something happened at school? Something happened every day at school. It's about your brother. Saying he got what he deserved. Who's saying that? Some kids. A coach. I didn't say anything. I didn't defend him. He was a wonderful brother to you. And he was my wonderful son. And we don't got to apologize for him. But if he was queer? Queer's a word. It's an ugly word. And I used it and meant it that way. But we knew Alan. We knew him. And we loved him, and he loved us with all his heart. 
and he wasn't a word. I don't understand how someone could be attracted to someone like themselves. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Nobody, no coach, nobody is going to tell us that he wasn't a decent and worthwhile and wonderful person. to tell you it's in the hands of the navy now but the navy isn't getting looks in the grocery store or everywhere else because of its connection to him okay but i am what do you want me to do you got the body dig it up do tests on him to show he wasn't queer <gasps> what i can't believe you said that <sighs> you're as bad as kathy Maybe it's in her, too. What? That! She's so intent on defending the queers. Didn't come from our side. This isn't about that. Of course it is, Dorothy. You want to be painted with that? We're all going to be painted with that. This is about if it's okay to kill someone because you don't like who they're attracted to. People all over the place who love people... Well, I don't necessarily approve of, but I'm not going to kill him because of it. You know why? Because it's none of my business. It's about more than that, Dorothy. You're just plain dumb. Or maybe you side with them, the faggots. got a call. There's going to be a memorial service for Alan in San Diego. Who's putting it on, the Navy? No, the people he met while he was stationed there. I'm flying out for it. Oh, well, I should go too, yeah? Mom, some of the people at the service will be gay. It's okay, I'll, I'll represent the family. No, I should be there. I just don't know any homosexuals. Mom, these were his friends. You know, people who want to honor him. meeting us again? John Miller. He's from the San Diego Veterans Association. He's also gay. You do the talking. You'll be fine, Mother. Mrs. Hages? Yes. I'm John Miller. How do you do? I hope your trip was uneventful. That's always the best kind. I'm Kathy. We've spoken. Ah, nice to meet yeah. you. Well, let me take your bags and check you in. I'll take that. Thank you. this is all right. Huh. It's a lot different than what we got at home. I'll be back. Where are you going? Call Billy. Call him here. They charge extra for the room. So, you knew Alan, 
Well, we, we were stationed here. And uh, we served on the Midway together. We kept in touch during his tour on the Bellow Wood. This isn't very comfortable for you, is it? What? My presence? Speaking to me? No. I'll, I'll excuse myself then. Oh, did you bring the photo to blow up for the poster for the memorial service? Yeah. Got it right here. Who's speaking? Uh, just some friends. People cared for him. I was prepared for this. Meeting you, his family. Just brings back how much we've all lost. You really care for him, huh? Everyone did. He was a wonderful man. What happened to him? should never have happened. How do you remember a friend like Alan, whose life was taken so harshly, when there's nothing left of him on this earth but memory, which is itself taken, but more gently over time? I don't have any answers for that, but someone I admire does. Denise Levertov, the American poet, she offers us all this possibility in her poem at David's grave, which she wrote after the death of a friend's young child. Yes, he is here in this open field, in sunlight, among the few young trees set out to modify the bare facts he's here. But only because we are here. When we go, he goes with us to be your hands that never do violence, your eyes that wonder, your lives that daily praise life by living it, by laughter. He is never alone here, never cold in the field of graves. Kathy, this is Peggy Evans. I'm so sorry for your loss. She's been covering the story out of Chicago. We've never met, but I've been to your house. I tried to talk to you once. I'm sorry, I don't remember. That's okay. Uh, well, she has some news from Japan, which I think you ought to hear. Three weeks after Alan was murdered, Charles Vins, one of the two men accused of killing your son, was convicted on minor charges in a secret Navy court-martial. The court-martial was secret? The Navy prefers to call it closed. But I've been talking to the Navy the whole time. They never said anything to me. They said I'd be the first to know. The Navy made a secret deal with Vince. His testimony against Helvey in exchange for dropping murder charges. But they had a confession from Helvey. They had a confession. Eyewitnesses placing both Vince and Helvey at the crime scene. Flight from the crime scene. Bloody shoes. The Navy's lawyer in Japan recommended Vince be charged with murder. But the top brass overruled him. What was Vince charged with? Failure to report a serious crime, concealing evidence, resisting arrest. What was his sentence? He was given a year, reduced to four months, of which he served 78 days. 78 days? Why is the Navy being so secretive about this whole thing? The Navy doesn't want the world to know why Alan was killed. And they don't want what else is happening to homosexuals on the Bellow Wood or in the Navy in general examined too closely. But the Stars and Stripes is out there. Everyone has the story by now. 
Yeah, but to this day, the Navy has not publicly acknowledged that Alan was homosexual or that he was killed because he was. Sounds like a cover-up, I know. But we can't conclude that until we see how the Navy handles the case against Helvey. Why wasn't I told about Charles Binns' court-martial? Mrs. Hages, please. Why was it kept secret from me? Ma'am, the decision on how to proceed with a prosecution is a complicated one. How does someone who kills a Navy man get off with 78 days? Now, just a minute. Vins was not charged with murder. Well, he was until you dropped the charge. Well, yes, but only to strengthen the case against the second defendant. The one you already had a confession from? Yes, but wait. Let's back up here. 78 days? Captain! I know, Mrs. Hages. I know, but wait. Please, wait. Now, let's talk about Vins. All right, only generally, because his court-martial isn't public record, and I shouldn't be saying any of this to you, but I will. The case against Vins was weak. The Navy understood, in coming to the arrangement it did with Vins, that Vins was a mere observer at the scene. He didn't actually assault your son. How do you know that? It was a conclusion reached by the best minds working on the case. It was therefore decided to turn Vins on Helvey, who did admit to the assault. Yeah, well, just because he didn't say he did it doesn't mean he didn't do it. Are you trying to tell me how to build a legal case, man? Well, then you're going to have to trust us that we know what we're doing. You had plenty of evidence against both of them. Mrs. Hages? Why didn't you use that evidence against Vins? Who is this? Kathy Schindler, Alan's sister. I have two people on the line? All right. Where, where are you getting these so-called facts? A friend in the press. All right, Mrs. Hages and whoever else happens to be listening. This is a very complicated, a very difficult case. It involves judgment calls that are made every day that are very easy to second guess. And the press happens to be a master at that. You promised you were going to tell me what you were doing. You were going to keep me informed. Now look, Helvey's got an A32 coming up very shortly. As soon as that date is set, we will call you. Well, that's all I'm asking for. You have the Navy's word on it. Thank you, Captain. Goodbye. <sighs> The Navy's word? Mom, the Navy has been lying to you. The Navy doesn't lie. Mother, look at the facts. Don't tell me what the facts are. I know what the facts are. Well, if you know what the facts are, then tell me. What are the facts? The Navy just told us. The Navy just lied. Would you stop saying that? They hold a secret trial for a guy involved in Alan's murder and... What, they forget to tell you? Well, they're a big organizations. Sometimes things like that happen. Who have you been dealing with through this whole thing? Captain Curtis. And he's a big organization? He's the guy who represents the big organization that didn't want you to know. The Navy's not confused, Mom. They know exactly what they're doing and why. Charles Vins held out of public view because military justice is often criticized? Absolutely not. I've seen the same story out of Chicago, and when you boil out the innuendo that there's some kind of cover-up going on here, the truth is the Vins court-martial went non-public for a very simple reason. A bureaucratic screw-up. So the Navy is not afraid of press attention on this whole thing? Absolutely not. We welcome it. Terry Helvey's Article 32 hearing, how's that going to be held? 
When you've been slam dunked once, you learn from that. And open proceeding, Commander Deaver. By the book. Calvi's A-32 was closed to the press in concurrence with the prosecutor and the Navy's public affairs office out of Japan. But it was supposed to be open, that's what they told me. They decided that media presence might interfere with Halvey's Day of Justice and influence the investigating officer so that he wouldn't be able to make an impartial decision. But well, why? This isn't a big celebrity trial where they got to lock up the jury. The hearing lasted less than two hours. They lied to me. I can only guess why they closed it. And, and it brings me back to Charles Vins. If Vins's testimony had been made public, it would reveal the, the motive behind Alan's death, that he was killed because he was homosexual. But the Navy had another problem. Vins had sworn to them that he had never laid a blow on Alan. Yet, the day after his secret deal was made, he told investigating officers, and I have it right here, I kicked Schindler in the head with the bottom of my foot between his forehead and the top of his head. I believe that I kicked him in the same manner two more times. I know for sure that I didn't kick him any more than three times after the hard kick. Dorothy, the Navy had this information before Vince's court-martial, that Vince physically participated in the assault that led to the death of your son. He kicked him. Vince kicked him and they let him off. I'm sorry. I gotta be the stupidest person in the world. Who shouldn't believe the Navy would talk to from day one? And anyone higher up. Anyone in an authority like they deserve it. Sure keeps you in the stupid box. It looks like I'm a permanent resident. Oh, come on, Dorothy. No, it's all that stuff that Peggy showed me. All the documents and stuff. It just makes me so mad. They're treating this whole thing like Alan deserves to be dead. <laughs> I've had it. It's over now. I'm stepping out of that stupid box right now. What are you going to do? Talk to the Navy. I'm going to talk to the Navy where no one talks to them the way I'm going to. And the papers. And the TV. And anyone will listen. All the Navy's got on its side is lies. I got the truth. The truth is a hell of a lot more stronger than lies. realized when we arranged this meeting that you would be bringing Miss Evans with you. You've been spending a lot of time with the press. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here, would I? Mrs. Hages, I'd just like to say that you're a Navy mother, wife, and daughter. You're part of us. Part of that special bond that gives all Navy families a, a great deal of pride. That's very nice. But I'd appreciate it if you didn't use empty words like that with me again. Considering what the Navy's made clear to me. That my son's death embarrasses the Navy. I don't know how you can say that, Mrs. Hages. I mean, believe me, a large part of the Navy's reticence in the information flow in this case has been about respecting you. Respecting what you knew or didn't know about your son's situation. Charles Vince isn't a free man because of the Navy's respect for me. I think you have been given a very false impression by the press as to how the Navy has handled this case. And with all due respect, Miss Evans, when it comes to sensitive legal matters, the civilian press is highly undisciplined. With all due respect to you, Commander, the newspaper that first broke the story was a military newspaper. All right. I understand you have taped some interviews with Good Morning America in 2020. It's going to be on tonight. Yes, I know. They called us for a comment. We, unfortunately, will not be able to oblige for legal reasons. 
My concern today is that you understand the political context within which your son's death has been made to symbolize a certain point of view. My son wasn't a symbol of nothing the night he was murdered. He was just a sailor who was attacked by other sailors who got the idea somewhere that that was okay to do what they did to him. Your suggestion that the United States Navy in any way mirrors or embraces the attitudes of Charles Vins and Terry Helvey is one that I would have to firmly reject. Well, then let me point out to you, Commander, what the Navy did to my son after he said he was a homosexual. They made him sign a paper that said that just for saying it, he could be dishonorably discharged and stripped of all his military benefits. Let me tell you what the Navy did to Charles Vins who admitted kicking my son over and over in the head until he was dead. He was given less than a dishonorable discharge. He served 78 days. And the Navy allows him to continue to wear his National Defense Service Medal. So tell me, in all of that, where the Navy didn't make it pretty clear the value they put on my son's life and service. And tell me, too, between my son and Charles Vince, who you think served the United States Navy and his country with honor. Mrs. Hages, I... I see that I can give you no answers that... that will satisfy you. That is the first honest thing the Navy has said to me. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to Japan to help his court martial just to make sure that the Navy doesn't make the same deal with him that they made with Charles Vince. And when the trial's over, I intend to look him in the eye and ask him the last question I have left in me. This young American sailor admitted he was gay. Then he was killed. When people know that you're gay, it is extremely dangerous, especially on a ship. His diary spoke with foreboding about military life and gays. Death of a sailor. It is so unclear why it took the Navy six weeks to say what this crime was about. But for all the unanswered questions, Many of Seaman Schindler's friends and supporters are convinced of one thing, that this was a crime of hate, that he was killed for only one reason, because he was gay. By all accounts, the 22-year-old sailor had served an anguished tour of duty aboard the USS Bella Wood when it arrived at the U.S. naval base in Sasebo at the southern tip of Japan. Schindler finally told his superiors he was gay. He recorded his declaration in his journal. If you can't be yourself, who are you? More people are finding out about me, and it scares me a little. You never know who will want to injure me or cease my existence. No more Alan Schindlers! No more Alan Schindlers! The gay community has staged a series of protests, saying military policy fosters a culture of violence towards them. Why should a serviceman need protection from his own shipmates? I began to understand after talking to some sailors from the U.S. naval base in San Diego. If you found out that one of the guys you were living with and working with was gay, what would you do about it? Uh, what, what happened in Japan? A guy got killed. It's going to happen every day. People get thrown overboard, you never know. Thrown overboard? You never know. What really did happen that night? Was it a cover-up? We tried to ask the Navy, including the captain, all those questions, but no one would talk to us about the case. In a written statement to 2020, they said... The Navy does not condone any acts of violence, unlawful behavior, or harassment. Even Dorothy Hages has gone public, joining a lobbying effort to press for a more thorough investigation of the murder. Watching her son become a cause has changed her attitude towards his life and his friends.
You've been told of Helvey's decision to plead guilty? Uh-huh. Well, why would he do that? To avoid the death penalty. So what we're going into isn't a full-blown trial. It's really a sentencing hearing. The court will decide Helvey's degree of punishment. Based on what? Mitigating circumstances he offers by way of defense. It's not going to be a lot of fireworks. It's convenient for the Navy. In what sense, Mrs. Hages? No one looks too close at why Alan was murdered, then the Navy doesn't get looked at too close either. Hey, that's his mother over there. Mm -mm. I saw her on TV last night. Court is in session. You were the first person to interrogate Petty Officer Helvey the night of the murder? Yes, sir. What did the defendant initially tell you? That the victim came on to him. A statement he later retracted. Did he not? Completely, sir. Tell you why he said that in the first place? To make him look better? Did he say how he felt about homosexuals? What did he say? He said he hated faggots, sir. That they disgusted him. You remember anything he may have said at that time about how he felt about Petty Officer Schindler's death? Yes, sir. He said, I'd do it again. I don't regret it. I'd do it again. State your name and profession for the court. Dr. Ethan Herring. I'm a major in the United States Air Force, a medical doctor and psychiatrist. Thank you. Now... You examined the defendant. Yes, sir, I did. And what were your conclusions? Airman Helvey came from a relatively deprived background in which he was subjected to varying degrees of both verbal and physical abuse. On that point, uh, tests reveal a large area of scarring in Airman Helvey's brain. There was a, a fair association between an individual who was prone to violence and closed head trauma. As well, uh, Airman Helvey's mother used LSD once while she was pregnant with him. Now, there's no literature on the effects of LSD on developing fetus. Doctor, However, it, it wouldn't be hard to make a jump and say that since Shepard. LSD penetrates the placental barrier... What can barrier, you tell us about the injuries? There may be some uh, ill-defined effects. These were not injuries one would see in a beating by a single person. These injuries were more consistent with those of a high-speed automobile accident or an airplane crash. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. It is in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. swallowed him up. I don't know why. I just did.
Terry is one of the best people God put on this planet. His brother told me if he did do this, then he hasn't done anything different than what was done to him over a hundred times. The only thing different is that the man died. Let's talk about what was done to your boys. Did their stepfather have any rules at the dinner table? He wouldn't allow them to talk. If anyone even looked at him, he'd start breaking things or tearing up the table. What other approaches did he take with the boys? Well, I was uh, called to the police station where they'd been sent from school, and they uh, took my boys' shirts off and showed me an almost solid welt on their backs, and they had bruises on their head. I found out he'd uh, been beating them with a boat oar. Well, what other discipline techniques did he use when keeping the boys in line? He, um... He'd send them to their room and not allow them to use the bathroom, which was downstairs. And uh, when one of the boys had a bowel movement upstairs, he made them both eat some of it. And you stayed with him throughout all this? Mrs. Hages, how did you feel when Alan joined the Navy? I was so proud. It was the most proudest day of my whole life. Because he had... He grew into a man who was worthy enough to have two families. And, and I was proud of what I did to help give him that. I didn't know that his second family wouldn't cherish him the way that I did. If I knew them, would I know now about how the Navy treats people who want to serve their country? I would have never have entrusted him to them. And now I'll never see him again. I'll never be able to call him and say, I love you, and he'll never, ever call me again. Say, I love you, Mom. And what's the hardest part for you now, Mrs. Hages? Well, when something like this happens to you, you go over it and over it. You know, the pointlessness of it. And it's like this big empty pit. And no matter how far you can see, you can't see the bottom. And I know I, I got to get out of here or I'll be trapped in all this anger that I have and all this sadness. So I, I try to find something else, some place to look. I listened to Mrs. Helby talk about all the horrible things that happened to her sons. And, and when I was listening to her, I thought, well, 
maybe I could look that way, you know, to try to find some sense in it, but I can't. My kids had a rough life, too, but they didn't murder anybody. I know I should forgive. I should ask the court to forgive, but I can't. Not right now. I know I have to forgive someday. And it's going to be the hardest thing for me. It's going to be the hardest thing for me and my family from now on. Defendant, please rise. Terry Helvey, your statement of contrition to this court notwithstanding, it is the decision of this court that you be dishonorably discharged from the United States Navy and serve a sentence of life in prison for your crimes. This court martial is adjourned. What has he ever done?